So what happens when something goes wrong in one of your cells? Let's say it gets attacked by a virus or just has a problem copying something. It turns out that there are little bits of genetic material that go through a process called RNA interference that regulate what goes on in a cell and actually can fix some of those problems. I'm here at Massachusetts General Hospital to talk to Harvard Medical School professor Gary Rovkin about how this RNAi works and what it can be used for in the future. So RNAi means RNA interference. That's something different than the RNA copy machine that I learned about in high school biology, right? Yeah, so an RNA copy machine takes a DNA and sort of makes a template that then ribosomes jump onto to make protein, and that's what you learned about in high school. In RNAi, what happens is that there's a system that will clip and destroy that messenger RNA that's made. And that system sounds very destructive. It sounds, well, why would you want to destroy it? And one way is, that's a nice way to re regulate something, is to have a system of production and destruction. And you can regulate how much, how active the destructive system is. So when you see a diagram in a textbook that says, you know, here's this, and then there's an arrow that goes to this, that arrow is actually RNAi moving around doing things. Things moving or, th or, th or proteins binding or proteins communicating, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it, things assembling, you know, you're, you're talking about cellular events. Uh, and so all of this is about how a cell goes from one state to another state. An organism goes from one state to another state. I mean, it's, it's really uh, the biochemical equivalent of a Google search, that what, uh, when, uh, the, the strings of letters that are present in the DNA sequence of an organism are chopped up into small 20 letter long segments and the, the RNAi machinery looks for matches with those 20 letter segments and it's exactly like doing a Google search where it looks for matches with the letters of, of a string you're putting in the query box and it looks for exact matches in the case of RNAi, it looks for inexact matches in the case of a related set of small RNAs called microRNAs so that I was involved in the, uh, the discovery of those and how they work. And you study RNAi, but you use RNAi to study yeah. RNAi. How does that work? So RNAi is a tool to inactivate genes. So you can inactivate one gene at a time by uh, either injecting a cell or, tr or incubating a cell with uh, small double-stranded RNAs of 22 long. And uh, in the case of C. elegans, who are so, so good at it, um, uh, we didn't discover this, but... but um, Andy Fire's lab discovered that you can actually feed C. elegans an E. coli that expresses double-stranded RNA, and by, by ingesting that double-stranded RNA from the E. coli through its gut, it will inactivate one gene. And so that allows you to query each of the 20,000 genes of worm by feeding it each of 20,000 different foods. It's all the same E. coli, but it's, each E. coli's got a different double-stranded RNA in it. It's truly miraculous that this works. So you can do whole organisms with fairly simple organisms. You can do cultures with more complex organisms. If you follow that to its logical end, is this something that could ultimately be used for gene therapy in humans in the future? Oh yeah, I mean there's, there's a, a real hope out there of um, the way I would put it is, it, given how siRNAs, the, the, the ability to sort of engineer small RNAs to inactivate human genes, for example, or mouse genes, given how revolutionary they've been in terms of lab practice, in terms of how we work, how scientists work at the bench, surely it will be as important in the pharmaceutical industry. And, and there are whole companies that are founded on that premise. The big issue is pharmacokinetics, you know, how do you get it into an organism, how long will it last? You know, if RNAi works that well, um, the way I like to think about it is, is think about pharmaceutical drugs. Most of the drugs that we use to treat people are things that came out of evolution, that organisms evolved to um, uh, engage their ecosystems. So that it's stuff that works in evolution, and, that, and we've just discovered it. If RNAi works that well, then organisms should use that in their battles for organism, uh, battles in the ecosystem. There's not a whole lot of evidence for that. So, so the worry is that if RNAi 
sort of has not been used in, in evolutionary time to cause diseases, it's going to be uh, hard to, it's hard to imagine how well it's going to work for treating diseases. That's my, but again, that's a kind of a Luddite take on this, right? It's, it's the same person who didn't believe that the Arabidopsis silencing was interesting. So, you know, uh, the 20-year-olds who are doing science today will prove that wrong, right? They'll, they'll figure out how to, you know, how small RNAs can uh, treat diseases. Well, it certainly sounds like a fascinating field and there's a lot to be done with it. Thank you for telling us about it. Okay. Pleasure.